Hello friends, welcome once again to Rick's Garage. I'm sitting out on the front porch today. I'm waiting for a car to be delivered. It belongs to a friend of mine. It just broke down out on the highway. Okay, it looks like this is it. All right, so I'll uh, come back when the car is in the garage. Come on. Okay friends, uh, the tow truck uh, dropped off the car. I've got it in the garage. I've let it cool off completely. The motor is stone cold now. Uh, right now, what I'm doing is charging the battery. The battery appeared to be a little low. The uh, lady may have continually tried to start it once it broke down on the highway. Before we get too far along, there's something very important I want to bring your attention to. This is a 2006 Honda Record, and it's a hybrid. Now you see this big orange uh, wire harness running around the motor? Do not fiddle with that. That is painted orange for a reason. It has extremely high voltage, so high that it can kill you. So do not attempt to disconnect that wiring harness or anything attached to it if you ever work on one of these vehicles. You need special training and special equipment to deal with that. The other thing, this is an IV Tech motor. What's significant about that is it uses oil pressure to manipulate the cam timing. This helps increase power and, and uh, increases fuel efficiency. So if this motor becomes low on oil, below a certain point, it will not run. Now when I uh, first brought it in, I checked, the first thing I did was check the oil. It was down uh, with nothing reading on the stick. Now that does not mean it's empty. If there's nothing reading on the stick, it could be down as little as two quarts. I wound up putting three quarts of oil in it and I briefly tried to start the car it didn't make any difference but that is one thing to look at on these IV tech motors is that um, it requires oil pressure to manipulate the cam timing to boost uh, a power and efficiency the other clue I got when I first brought it in there was a strong odor of antifreeze and when I looked in the car, I noticed there were two containers of engine coolant. Now, I don't know if they were carrying this around with them because they had been losing coolant or whether they uh, brought those in an effort to uh, try to get the car running after they broke down. But uh, I know there's a strong odor of engine coolant and they have two bottles of engine coolant in the car. The only information I got from the driver was that the engine stopped. She was going down the highway and the engine stopped. That's the only information I got. So let's open the radiator cap. Now never do this hot. Like I said, um, I've allowed the engine to completely cool down. And there appears to be absolutely nothing in this radiator. So I'm hoping that what happened, she just let the car overheat and sometimes the computer will uh, sense that the engine's overheating and shut down. So I'm hoping that's what happened. Now the car's completely cool now, so perhaps it will start. So I'm going to shut off the battery charger. I've charged it up enough. And we're going to go see if we can get this car to start and see what happens. All right, I'm ready to give the car a try. Let's see if it'll run. That didn't sound good to me. I can smell fuel, so I know it's getting gas, and that strong odor of antifreeze has returned. But what it felt like to me, after many, many years of hearing engines turn over, 
sound like a compression problem didn't sound like it's getting a lot of compression um, there's certainly no spark it would run if it had spark but it, I, I'm hearing in my experience the motor sounds like there's a lack of compression there so that tells me two uh, possibilities involving antifreeze number one um, it could be valve timing uh, the valve uh, timing could be thrown off by the um, timing belt um, that would explain the antifreeze smell because the timing belt turns the water pump so that could be one possibility um, the other possibility I hate to think about this but it could be a problem with uh, a, a possibly leaking head gasket or blown head gasket neither one of those uh, situations are very good I'm gonna get someone to um, help me turn this car over and I'm gonna see if there's anything going on with this radiator while the car is being turned over my trusty German Shepherd is here to help me out but he's not gonna be able to turn the car over for me yeah. Okay, go ahead and turn over the car. Oh my God. Okay, that's it. That's enough. I've seen enough. Thank you. Okay, so I hope you saw that exhaust gases were blowing right out of the radiator. Without the engine even running, just trying to start it. You can see the exhaust blowing out of here. So that tells me we don't need to look any further. It's a blown head gasket. It is not good news. This particular motor would cost a fortune to have that head gasket replaced. And one of the problems is, it's been my experience, that uh, when you replace a head gasket, sometimes they don't last very long. You wind up with having the same thing happen again. So uh, I would not trust the car, even if I had the gasket replaced. This is a 2006 automobile. It's probably worth two twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars in that range there. I don't know what the actual blue book is on it, but I would be willing to bet that it probably costs two thousand dollars or more to get this head gasket replaced. It's something that I would not attempt. I'm retired now. I don't take on big jobs. The only reason this car was bought to me was because it was a Sunday and they had no other place to bring it. Nothing was open. So I told them they could bring it here. I would take a look at it. If it was something simple, I would fix it. If it wasn't, um, they could come and get it uh, once they make arrangements to, for someone else to look at it. I'll have to call them and give them the bad news. Uh, while they're doing that, if they do decide to repair it and replace the head, I don't know which head it is, and I'm not going to try to find out. Um, the next step would be to do a compression check to see if it's one or both heads. The other thing I noticed is when I pulled this radiator cap, the cap was broken. It wasn't working. So that is probably how they were losing fluid, coolant, and why they were carrying coolant with them. And I think they just let it go too low on coolant, uh, overheated it to the point where uh, they warped the cylinder head. Then the PCM, the ignition module, or uh, what did I say, power control module, detected the problem and shut the motor down on them. That's really all I've got. I'm going to have to call them and give them the bad news. So just keep in mind, um, if you do have a motor like this, do not touch anything to do with that orange uh, wire harness. And uh, make sure you have a good radiator cap. As simple as that. It's probably a uh, $15 radiator cap is what ruined this motor. Although the engine was down a couple of quarts, so I don't think the car was being very well maintained. So I want to thank you for watching Rick's Garage. Before I go, I'm going to post two videos to your left. If you find either one of interest, feel free to click on it. And to your right, I'm going to post a picture of my avatar in the form of my trusty German Shepherd. Feel free to click on that if you wish to subscribe. 
So thanks once again for watching and we hope to see you again really, really soon.